Today, we're going to learn how to implement the deck using the Array of Array implementation. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. There are several ways to implement the deck. Today's video is going to discuss how to do that using the Array of Array implementation. There are several ways to implement the deck. The first is to use a list as the underlying data structure. Now, the list is super effective for adding and removing elements from either end, but it does not allow random access. The C++ version of the deck does require random access. So we can't use a list to use, implement a square bracket operator. The next implementation is a wrapping array. In this implementation, we have an array of elements and we have two indices, the deck index, which the user sees, and the array index, which is the index of the underlying array. Now this is very effective, but when we have to resize the array, we have to copy the elements which results in undesirable performance implications. The next implementation is an array of pointers. Here we have an wrapping array implementation, but the wrapping array is an array of its pointers, and then each one refers to the actual element. Therefore, when we have to resize our array, we don't actually have to move the elements. And this is very effective. It's O sub 1 for the square bracket operator, O sub 1 push back and push front and pop back and pop front, and all these what we desire to have for the deck. But there is one problem memory fragmentation. Because we have a whole bunch of very small allocations, one for each element, we don't make a very effective use of memory. So the final implementation is an array of arrays. What we're going to do is we're going to group a collection of elements into blocks, and then we're going to have a wrapping array of pointers, just like we did with the array of pointers implementation. And this gives us all the performance characteristics we desire. The wrapping array implementation utilizes four separate indices. The first one, deck index ID. The second one, the cell index IC. The third one, the block index IB. And the fourth one, the array index IA. Now, the deck index is what the user sees. So if I have seven elements in my deck, I'm going to have the deck index zero through six, where deck index zero is the front element. The wrapping array decks will have several blocks. Each block will have a fixed number of cells. That's the cell size or num cells. Index cell will tell me the index of the cell within a block. In this example, I have cell size of three, so my cell indices will be zero, one, and two. Then I have a collection of blocks. In this case, I have five blocks, block index zero through four. Note that block index zero and one are not currently utilized. Block two is partially filled, block three is fully filled, and block four is partially filled. Then finally, I have my array index. If all the blocks were laid flat, then my array index will go zero through, in this case, five blocks and three cells each, fit zero through 14. We can see from the pseudocode the way to translate a deck index into an array index, a block index, and a cell index. So I take the deck index and I add it on to IA head, and that's the, where the first element in the deck resides in the array index, and then modify the number of cells times the number of blocks. And that gives me my array index. With the array index, I can then determine my block index. My block index is my array index divided by num cells. And then my cell index is array index mod num cells. We can look at the same graph in a slightly different way. Notice how my block zero and block one are not allocated, but all I did was I turned my blocks sideways so they line up next to each other. And now we can see my deck index zero, one, two, three, four, five in a little more intuitive way. And here's another representation of exactly the same thing. Here I've laid my cells side by side by side by side. Notice my array index goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And those are array indices that are not currently used, well, partially because block 0 and block 1 are not allocated. And then in array index 7, that corresponds to deck index 0, which is in block 2 and cell 1. And then array index 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 refer to deck index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then array index 13 or 14 are not currently utilized. So how do we insert? Well, first of all, when all the blocks are full, a new base array is allocated. This has not changed the composition of any existing blocks. So in this example, I have four blocks, and I need to make room for more, so I'm going to double the size. And so the new pointer array is going to still point to the same blocks, which have not moved, but now I'm going to have four additional null pointers. And this allows me to grow the, the deck capacity without actually moving any blocks or moving any elements. All right, another example, when a base array is reallocated, then I want to unwrap the blocks. And so in this example, um, 
deck index zero is slot is value A, deck index one is value B, and deck index two is value C. And then when I reallocate these guys, then I'm going to put A, B, and then C in the correct order. So we always want to unwrap our blocks when we allocate. And the final example here is if a block needs to be split. Now, deck index zero is, is A, and then B, then C. And so I need to, in this case, move them into separate blocks. And this is one of the few times that we actually have to move an element when we have to reallocate. Most of the time, the blocks stay contiguous. But in this time, I have to split the block because the block itself wraps. To demonstrate how this works, we'll start with a deck of integers with block size four. So when I push back seven, I need to create a block and I'm only gonna have one element on it, obviously element seven. Notice how array index is zero, block index is zero, cell index is zero, and um, block index is zero. When I say push back eight, well, I have plenty of space after seven, so I'm just gonna add eight. When I say push front six, well, I need to add a block in front of my current block, which requires me to allocate a new array of pointers. When I allocate the new array of pointers, I will first create the new array. I will move my block into that array. And then after that is done, then I will think about pushing front. And since push front is going to happen in front of my current block, which is block zero, that means my new block will go in block number one. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. We do this in two steps. First is we re reallocate, and then we push back or push front or whatever else the operation happened to be. Okay, when I push front five, there's a space in front of the six, so I get the five. When I push back nine, there's space after the eight, so I get the nine. When I say pop front, then I'm gonna take the five off. When I take say pop back, I'll take the nine off, and that leaves me with a final state of my deck. This next example is actually quite a bit more complicated. So I have a deck of characters and notice my block is of size two. So when I push front Y, well, I have no block, so I have to allocate a new block. So now I have a, a block that's empty of two cells. And when I push front, it always goes onto the back, which is the right side of the block. So from the user's perspective, I just have one cell, but now it's gonna be on the right side. So it's gonna be cell index one, cell index zero is empty. When I push front X, well, no problem because there's space in front of the Y, so no problem. When I push front W, something really complicated is gonna happen here. Now, since my deck is full, I have to allocate a new array of pointers, which means I have to bring down X and Y, and so, I, so that means block one will be empty, but block zero will have X and Y. And then after I've grown the deck, then I push front, and push front will wrap to the left all the way on to the end of the deck. Now, when I push back Z, well, there's no space after Y because that block is full. So now I once again need to reallocate the deck. So now I'm gonna have four pointers here, okay? And I'm gonna unwrap it first. So block one now becomes block zero. Block zero, uh, zero becomes block one because remember the order of the deck is W is, is deck index zero, X is deck index one, and Y is deck index two. And then after I'm done reallocating, then I'm gonna push back the Z. Now, when I pop back, well, that's slot Z. And when I pop back, that will remove the entire block. And then when I pop front, that will remove the, the whole block of W. So when I'm finished here, then block zero is not allocated. Block one has two cells, X and Y. Block two and block three are empty. Now notice how array index zero and one correspond to block zero. Array index two and three are X and Y. And array index four, five, six, and seven are unallocated. This is example 10.2 and 10.4 in the C++ data structures textbook.